Welcome to the Global Discussion, discussions with creatives, leaders and thinkers. My name is Simon Hodgkins and today I'm joined by Priscilla Gravenhorse. You're very welcome to the Global Discussion today. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show. Let's begin maybe by asking you, Priscilla, to explain a little bit about your background, what you're involved in and your area of focus. So over to you. Oh, sure. Um, thank you, Simon. Thank you for having me. Um, I'm Priscilla Gravenhorst. I live in New York City, and my background is in advertising. Um, I have a, a long career of working for the large agencies uh, such as McCann, um, Havas, Ketchum. And I started in production, and I moved into project management and then um, portfolio management of accounts. Um, since I worked for the large agencies, I have been exposed to multiple different types of um, uh, clients from um, oil to pharmaceutical to beauty to luxury brands, <laughs> uh, tech, uh, telecommunications, you name it. Um, so I have a lot of experience in multiple different types of specialties. Um, some of the large clients are uh, Microsoft um, that I worked uh, with for um, quite a while. Um, Verizon, Samsung, uh, Novartis. Um, and huge, huge, huge Exxon. Brands. Yeah, 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 blue chip um, clients. So, um, you know, large accounts and large responsibilities. And um, currently, I am a chief of staff to CMOs. Well, that's exciting. And I'm going to come back to you on that because I want to find out a lot more about that. But just going back to what you said there, you, you threw out some very big global brands that obviously you've, you've worked with. Um, but also your time at McCann, you know, anybody in the advertising world or in the, the marketing sort of sector knows these big brands, Ketchum, McCann, et cetera. Um, was that something you always wanted to do? How did you end up doing that? Was that a passion that you had or a particular interest or was it just a career that you that you ended up stumbling upon? No, no, no. I, I stumbled upon it. It was all by accident and it just my career happened to me. I, I didn't even have a roadmap. Um, I, another lifetime ago, I worked on low budget uh, Hong Kong feature films. And so I learned to get very comfortable working with large groups of people, as you know, a set um, a film set is like 40 people. So I started getting very comfortable with orchestrating um, and uh, commanding um, large groups of people. Yeah, and very much so in an international setting, I'm sure. So you're, you're in the right place here on the global discussion, uh, Priscilla. The, so let, let's get on to the other thing that you mentioned then. So when I thought of chief of staff years ago, it reminded me of the White House or something like that, you know, <laughs> uh, where these these, you know, very high uh, official uh, capacities might have a chief of staff. Um, but what is a chief of staff today? What 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 do you do? I know that you've got this term about the chief marketing officer's sort of secret weapon, a chief of staff. Can you maybe <laughs> expand on that for our audience? Well, you know, there's there's a chief of staff, which is very traditional to uh, CEOs um, in, in particular. But given the climate and my background, I zeroed in immediately on helping my marketing peeps. Um, it's a tough world out there. And as you know, um, being a CMO yourself, uh, it's hard. And it's coming at, you know, it's coming at us really fast. And they need somebody to help enable um, their, you know, uh, their success. And um, so, you know, a, a chief of staff, uh, you know, handles project, you know, global project management, um, you know, marketing communications and operations. So it's um, orchestrating um, and keeping a state of flow with projects and teams and having that coupled with um, the rhythm of the business. And so being a right hand to a CMO 
and making sure that communication doesn't get watered down. Um, and the biggest thing that we're having right now as it, you know, uh, cross silos within the C-suite and making sure that the vision, the mission, and the voice of the CMO gets across the entire board of the C-suite. Um, not just to the CEO, but the CFO and, you know, um, human resources um, and, you know, uh, CIO and strategy. Um, so the chief of staff is really an enabler <clears throat> to accelerate, um, you know, the, um, the CMO and, um, their mission and keep keep on strategy. Well, thank you for for expanding on that. And obviously, away from the White House uh, or or wherever a chief of staff may be uh, in those sort of fields, of course, working hand in hand historically with say the chief executive of a large organization, to some degree they were sort of like the strategic leader in the background, making things happen, almost like a quasi chief operations officer, I suppose keeping the torchlight lit for the strategic plans that the company has, making sure things happen. And I think what's particularly insightful is your ability to understand and to spot this opportunity where chief marketing officers, um, he said, uh, are bombarded <laughs> at the moment with uh. just this plethora of new tools, new technology stacks. We have this huge wave of artificial intelligence sweeping through the marketing tool set. Uh, we have uh, content that's changing constantly. And of course, we're all globally connected faster than ever before. And maybe it's just me, but I've never seen a rate of change, at least that's how it feels, as fast paced as we are today, which is kind of incredible when you think we've kind of come through a pandemic. It is just from a chief marketing officer's perspective, it feels ferocious. So I'm sure you, you've got a lot of your work cut out there, Priscilla. I, I really see it as an opportunity. And with the support of a chief of staff, I really do believe that a CMO can make an immense impact, not only um, in the culture of the organization, um, but, but for the brands and for the long term, not just the short term, but the long term. And you mentioned you mentioned the silos as well. And you know, having that joined up executive group, um, the team, you know, being able to work across an organization. Do you often see problems in this area where maybe the chief marketing officer is spending a lot of time? I was talking to somebody recently where it's all about the leads, it's all about demand generation, where actually there are so many other fundamental areas of marketing that aren't necessarily reaching some of those silos because it isn't set up properly or the voice at the C-suite table maybe isn't strong enough or maybe isn't even there at all. Yeah, uh, well, you know, I mean, I'm on a mission uh, to get them back into the driver's seat for sure. Um, and it, often uh, the CMO doesn't get the ear of the, you know, CEO and, um the communication also gets um, broken down um, or just different missions and across the C-suite. And so you could have five different missions from five different, <laughs> you know, executives and, and that's a problem, <laughs> you know? So um, with my, you know, with my really deep understanding of marketing and how it works from the bottom up, I am able to go in and really, you know, I'm a systems thinker. And so I, I go in there and it's like, okay, what needs, what needs to get simplified and what needs to, you know, um, be structured in a way that we can go straight into the, the, the problem or, or the issue and, and address it immediately with a chief of staff to a CMO, they're, there's, they're able to, um, you know, be able to make decisions faster. They're able to get more visibility within the whole organization. 
And they're, I mean, 75% of CMOs are spending a lot of the, uh, their time on finances. You know, project management, my background, I understand finances. I can help tell the story so I could work with the um, the CFO and I could I could bring that to uh, the CMO um, and the cross-functional, uh, you know, departments. Um, I'm, you know, I'm able to weave in very easily um, to, you know, orchestrate a kind of flow and taking on um, initiatives, you know, the special initiatives, um, of the executive, I'm I'm able to stay on track and on budget, um, and strategically, I I work with the CMO to um, you know stay on the marketing mission, but also making sure that it it rolls up to um, the business mission and keeping the strategy aligned. Quite often, it, it gets it gets broken down. So, Priscilla, another thing I want to ask you, if it's okay, is why is now the right time to be bringing a chief of staff in? What is what is the reason that a chief marketing officer needs a chief of staff today, in your view? Well, you know, this role really doesn't exist. Um, I, after pivoting out of advertising, I realized that uh, marketers really need help going into the future and dealing with the fast pace and all of the changes that are that are coming at them. Um, also, you know, a lot of my uh, CMO peeps just aren't getting the respect that they really need and they need to get back into the driver's seat. Um, and I want to help them. I'm, I'm really on a mission to help CMOs, you know, be the superstars that 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 they are. Thank you, uh, Priscilla. And can I ask a question, just a follow-on question to what you're sharing with us here, which is, are there commonalities when you work with leading chief marketing officers? Do you find they've all got the same sort of core five or six problems that they're all dealing with is it completely different because every company is different meaning are they all trying to get to the next creative big thing but their bandwidth poor or is it the finances that are taking up so much time as you say uh, versus maybe some of the other areas they should be focusing on are there any sort of commonalities in your work or do you is everything treated as a, a very different project um there are commonalities it really depends on the maturity of the organization. Um, you know, if it's a if it's a medium, small to medium sized company, they obviously have different pain points than a larger blue chip uh, type of company. Um, but you know, just not having time, um, spending too much on finances, <laughs> um, retaining talent. And making smart decisions on um, where to implement the tech within the marketing department, and how to, and and how it's used, and making sure that everybody's educated within in the teams. Um, and are you seeing anything in the sort of regulatory field, or from a you know data privacy perspective? Because that seems to, that landscape seems to be getting. I'm not going to say tougher, but it is changing. There's new regulations coming into play, particularly around AI and data privacy and, you know, good corporate governance. Is that taking up more of a CMO's time today I, than it used to? I think it will absolutely take up a lot of the CMO's time um, in, you know, early next year. I, I'm definitely, um, there's, there's going to be um, agendas, um, making sure that those are addressed. But there's a lot of unknowns and we're all going to be experimenting. And so next year, I think it's, you know, it's about being an experienced learner, um, you know, having a present futurist mindset, um, collaborating is key, you know, just being strategic and also a bit of a risk, a risk taker. Interesting. Yeah, I was only reading an article this morning about sometimes you have to take the risks, uh, you know, and of course you have to calculate the impact if it doesn't come off. But sometimes the only way of actually having a real 
strong breakthrough is to take a, a few risks, you know? Um, well, it's innovation, you know? Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I think we're going to have true. a lot of that. <laughs> I think we're going to have a lot of that. And I think it's ex it's exciting. We're all experimenting. We're all kids, you know, playing with, man, this is so cool, <laughs> you know? I mean, just me alone, you know, the type of administrative stuff that I do. I mean, I'm just blowing through, you know, what used to take me a really long time and now I don't stress about it so much, but. Um... Yeah, there are some major advantages. Can I ask you another question, uh, Priscilla? You know, as a, now we've got this sort of experienced chief of staff here, somebody that can really help a chief marketing officer and an organization. Um, is there any sort of, advice or some things that you could maybe share with us here some things that you know cmos in today's fast-paced world really need to be keeping an eye on really keeping an open mind i i you know being flexible and and keeping an open mind i think with everything that is happening and every, every everything is a fast pace right now and we're going to be experimenting and we're going to be making ex uh, mistakes, but we need to be open. We need to be learning and we need to be thinking about the future and being responsible. Yeah, no, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and I, I think it's only going to get maybe a little bit busier. So getting a little bit organized, maybe with the help of a chief of staff is not a bad idea for people to start thinking about. Uh, as you look forward, you know, at the time of us recording, we're coming into a new year. So when you look forward to the next six months, 12 months, how do you go about planning in your own sort of work today? Is it meticulous? Is it, well, we'll see what happens next quarter. What's your approach to planning and what are you, what are you looking at on your roadmap over the next year ahead? Um, well, twofold. I mean, I, I do plan by quarter um, and I do have a roadmap or I, you know, try to plan as best as I can and, and make, um, you know, educated uh, assumptions. Um, so I do like to have, have that um, in place. For me, um, in the first quarter, I'm going to be... Um, do, yeah, partnering up with Mary Guilford, um, who um, is the founder and owner of Future Ready CMO, and um, also Jay Weiser, who um, you know teaches um, and consults uh, leaders on the five uh, leadership superpowers. Um, so those partnerships are going to be really interesting um, in the first quarter for me. An interesting superhero team you're putting together. So. <laughs> <laughs> very good. The next year ahead, uh, 2024, sounds very exciting. Um, listen, before we run out of time, I want to squeeze in two more questions if I can. Um, the first thing is, is there anything that I haven't touched on today or anything else you'd like to maybe share or leave our worldwide audience with? And secondly, and uh, importantly, if people want to connect with you, to find out more all about getting results with a, uh, a chief of staff, where's the best place to point people to? Um, people could go straight to my LinkedIn uh, profile, uh, Priscilla Grabenhorst. Um, so that's easy. Um, and just, you know, send me a note or DM me. Um, you know, I, I think for the future of the CMO and going into this the new year, I, I really... I really do believe that they need an enabler to help, um, you know, accelerate um, their their vision and their their excellence. That brings us nicely to the end of the episode of the Global Discussion. Thank you for everybody who's been watching or listening to this discussion here today with Priscilla and I. Uh, be sure to follow, like, subscribe, do everything that I need you to do to help support the show. And make sure you pop over and connect with Priscilla on LinkedIn if you're interested in the wonderful world of a chief of staff and what can be done to assist a CMO in today's busy world. Uh, thank you so much indeed for everybody who's joined us. And make sure that you join me back here for some more discussions with creatives and leaders and thinkers 
just like Priscilla. So thank you, Priscilla. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you very much. 